very good day to all the 10th standard students who are appearing for the CBSC board exam of 2022-23. I'm going to teach you English, some of the important poems and a few important lessons that would appear for the board exam. It means that is probably appearing for the board exam because these lessons have a lot of importance and that is why I'm going to teach you only some very important lessons this year. As you know your exams are appearing very fast in the month of February and I think the first exam that you have to do is English and so you have to be prepared with the English lessons. Now today what I'm going to teach you is a poem called Annie Gregory. I hope you have already, this poem was already learned by you in school, but I'm going to give you a, another, I'm going to give you an explanation once more so that you would remember these points that would be helpful for you in your board exam. Now Annie Gregory was written by William Butler Eats. And before I could begin the poem, I would like to tell you about the poetic devices or the figure of speech that has been used in this poem. It is very important for every student to know the poetic devices that are being used or the literary devices, poetic devices, figure of speech, whatever it is, is being used in the poem. You have to be, because usually they ask poetic devices from poems. They don't ask from the literature section. So these poems, you should be well versed in your poetic devices. In Annie Gregory, there are three poetic devices that have been used by the poet. Now I will tell you what are the three poetic devices and I would explain to you what these poetic devices are so that if you know about these poetic devices even for the other poems you will be able to relate them to the other poems. Now the three poetic devices that have been used in Annie Gregory one is apostrophe it's called the apostrophe. The second, metaphor. And the third one, alliteration. Now, what is an apostrophe? Now, you know what an apostrophe is. In your grammar, you must be knowing what an apostrophe is. It is an apostrophe to show possession. When we want to show possession of something, we put an apostrophe. But in literature, <coughs> sorry, in poems, Apostrophe, okay, see for example apostrophe is when the poet is addressing somebody who is dead or that is not present as if she or he were present while the poet was writing the poem. So that is called apostrophe. Now once more I would repeat to you apostrophe means when the poet is addressing a dead person or a person who is not present at that particular moment when he is writing the poem. So that is called apostrophe. And metaphor, as you know, it is a figure of speech that is used for a comparison. No, it's a figure of speech used for a comparison, but not like a simile. Now, simile is very easy to understand. I hope every one of you know what a simile is. Simile is very easy to understand and very easy to pick out from the lines because in a simile you will have two words. Either you will have as or you will have like. So when two things are compared to each other using the words as and like, then immediately you are able to understand that it is a simile. But Metaphor is very different from a simile. You can call a metaphor as an implied simile or you can also say an implied comparison where 
these two words as and like are not used but the description of the object look as if it is really true so that is called a metaphor so after you listening to this video i hope that you would make small notes of these things in your rough book or notebook so that you would remember them and it would be easy for you not only in the 10th standard but also in the 11th and 12th standard these poetic devices are very important so as i told you there are three poetic devices i am in gregory one is apostrophe metaphor and alliteration now apostrophe is when the poet is addressing a dead person or a person who is not present at that particular moment that is called an apostrophe the second one is metaphor which is an implied simile or an implied comparison where the poet is trying to compare without using the words like and as and the word that he is comparing the object that he is comparing literally seems to be true and alliteration i think every one of you know it's when two consonant sounds are repeated not vowels that you must remember when two consonant sounds are being repeated in the same line then we can call it alliteration so now i hope that you understood the three poetic devices that have been used in this poem ani gregory number 1 apostrophe number 2 metaphor and the third one alliteration the rhyming scheme of the poem i would give it to you in the beginning itself the rhyming scheme of the poem and i'm very much sure that you know how to find out the rhyming scheme but i will also explain to you how to find out the rhyming scheme of a poem now the rhyming scheme used in this poem is a b c p d b now from this rhyming scheme how many alphabets are there so there are six alphabets so what do you understand from that each stanza of the poem is of six lines so every line you have to have a poet you have to have a rhyming scheme so i will later on tell you how you find out the rhyming scheme so i hope you understand at least you have understood what i told you up to now now i am going to tell you about you know i am going to tell you about the poem i am going to introduce the poem to you the introduction now ani gregory is an 18 line poem it completely it consists of 18 line and it is in the form of a dialogue you know what is a dialogue a conversation between two people is called dialogue so this ani gregory is the in the form of a dialogue it is 18 line okay and the speaker is speaking to a lady or a young girl called ani gregory now this the poet now the poet is the speaker here and the poet is speaking to ani gregory and now you must know who ani gregory is now you may wonder who is this ani gregory what connection does he have with the poet now ani gregory is the grand daughter of lady gregory she's called lady agusta gregory that's her name she is the grand daughter of lady agusta gregory who was a very dear friend of the poet and that is why the poet is mentioning the name ani gregory now why does the poet mention the name ani gregory and who is ani gregory the poet mentions the name ani gregory because ani gregory is the great sorry is the grand daughter of lady agusta gregory who was 
a very close friend to William Butler Yeats. A very close friend to the poet. So that is why he is, you know, he is mentioning Annie Gregory. So that is the introduction. Now let me tell you something more. When you are writing an answer, now you have two marks answer, you have five marks answer in 10, in 10 standard. The literature section is of 40 marks. So there are answers that are two marks each. There are five questions that you have to answer. And then you have to answer five mark questions. There are two five five mark questions. So when you are writing two five five mark questions, you should always try to mention something about the author or the poet. A few lines, two or three lines about the author or the poet. So I would like to now tell you something about William Butler Yeats. I hope you remember this and you keep it in your mind or you keep it in your memory so that you can write it during the examination. Now, William Butler Yeats was an Irish poet, a dramatist, a writer, and he was a very famous figure of the 20th century literature. So this is very important for you to understand. Now I would repeat it once more. William Butler Yeats was an Irish poet. Irish poet, he belonged to Ireland. He was an Irish poet. He was also a dramatist and he was also a writer. And he was one very famous figure, one very famous person in the 20th century literature. And he helped to found a theater called Abbey Theater. It is he who helped to found that theater called the Abbey Theater. So I hope you understood about William Butler. Now, I'm just going to give you a short summary of the poem. And then later on, I would read the poem and I would explain the poem line by line exactly to you for it to be easy for you to understand. Now the summary of the poem I'm just going to tell you is the poem is basically a conversation between the poet and a young girl called Annie Gregory. So this is the summary. This is a conversation, it's a dialogue. The conversation, now this summary is basically a conversation or basically a dialogue. It is between two people. One is the poet and the other one is Annie Gregory. The poet is speaking to Annie Gregory and Annie Gregory replies to the poet. So a conversation takes place between the poet and Annie Gregory. And Annie Gregory is a very young girl. Okay. So the poet tells her that if she finds a young boy who becomes sad because of her rejection, it does not mean he was a true lover. So what he is trying to tell Annie Gregory is that if any one boy had proposed to her, and if Annie Gregory has rejected her, him, she sh should not feel sad. And that is the meaning. Okay, because if anyone has proposed to Annie Gregory, and Annie Gregory has rejected him, and he becomes very sad, that means his love was not true. The reason is, he did not love her for herself. He loved her yellow golden hair. He fell in love with her only because of the yellow golden hair. Now from here we can learn a very important proverb. The proverb is that don't judge a book by its cover. Okay, don't judge a book by its cover. 
or else beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. He may find when a person falls in love with someone, he may find something that is good in that something, the outward appearance. He is not ever thinking about the inner, inner feelings or inner soul. That is the meaning. He just falls in love with the outer appearance and later on, see the outer appearance is not going to remain forever. The beauty, whatever beauty you have, one day it's going to fade away. As you grow older and older, the beauty will fade away. And at that time, the person will feel a little bit sad that he now is, and the girl will also feel sad because he doesn't show much love at that particular time when the beauty fades away. So that is what the poet is trying to say. Now there is a message in this poem. Okay, now supposing they ask you for the board exam, what is the message conveyed by the poet? Or what is the central idea of the poem Annie Gregory? Now the message, now listen carefully, the message of the poem. So please do write this down in your book so that you would learn it and keep it for the examination. The message is, one who loves the soul can capture the heart and can only selflessly love others. It means that you should not love a person for the outer appearance. We should love a person for the inner soul, for his character, for what he is. Sometimes outward appearance may look very beautiful or may look very good. But inside, the person would not be very good as what you thought would be. So only a person who can capture the heart and, you know, who loves the soul. Soul is the spirit, the inside of you. If a person can love you for your, for your good what you are, for what you are and not for your outer appearance, then only you can love selflessly, love even other people. The Annie Gregory is not only a lesson, okay, Annie Gregory is not just a lesson to Annie Gregory. It is a lesson for all the people in the world, all the people that you can't find anyone in this world, you have to learn one particular lesson in Annie Gregory. It's not only about Annie Gregory. The poet is not telling us only about Annie Gregory. The poet wants to convey to us that in this whole world, in the whole universe, there is only one person who can love you endlessly. He can love you for who you are. And that person is only God. The love of God is the real love that you can experience. Nobody can love you like how God loves you because he is the one with true love. Whatever you are, even whether you are a criminal or whether you are anything that is bad, whatever you are, God loves you endlessly and he is the only one who will be able to love you. This is the lesson that is given to you and you have to realize and understand this lesson. So now I'm going to read line by line. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to give you the explanation of every line and I'm going to read the poem and so that you would understand better. I would advise you when I start teaching this poem, reading the text from the textbook, it would be very helpful for you if you would keep your textbook in front of you and you would mark all the important things that are necessary in your textbook so that it would be very helpful to you when you are learning for the examination. So now I'm going to start. Annie Gregory by William Butler Eats. Now, as I told you, this is a dialogue between two people. One is the poet and the other one is Annie Gregory. 
Never shall a young man, thrown into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts at your ear, love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. Now here, in these lines, the speaker, probably, what is he trying to make Annie understand? He's trying to, he's saying to Annie that a beautiful colored hair can make, hmm? now what, I'm reading it once more, never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey colored ramparts at your ears, love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So the poet is telling Annie Gregory, never shall a young man, that means, never shall a young man means no young man should be thrown into despair, should not be thrown into despair. What is despair? A hopeless condition, a miserable condition. So he is telling Annie Gregory, let not any man or any young boy or any young man become hopeless or become miserable when he falls in love with you because he is falling in love with you only for your honey-colored ramparts. Honey-colored ramparts means, now what is rampart? Ramparts means, you know what is a fort? A protection, a wall built around a city for protection. And in these lines, honey-colored ramparts, what is the poetic device used here? The poetic, please underline honey-colored ramparts and please write the poetic device there. It is a metaphor. Now the poet in the beginning of the poem explains to Annie that not a young man, never should a young man become desperate or never should a young man become hopeless falling in love with you only because of your yellow hair, which is acting like a fort. It's acting like a protection. Now why is the poet saying that the hair is acting like a protection? Because at your years, what does he mean at your years? It means that the hair of Annie Gregory is covering her ears just like a fort that is protecting a city. That is what he means. By those great honey-colored ramparts at your ears, love you for yourself alone. He says, if anybody is loving you, he should not fall in love with you because of your golden hair. Because if he falls in love with you just because of your golden hair, he may be rejected by you and he would go into despair. He would go into hopelessness and that should never happen. That is what the poet tells Annie Gregory. Love you for yourself alone and not your yellow ear. So please underline, not your yellow hair. It is alliteration. So now in this stanza, there are two poetic devices. The two poetic devices, one is metaphor and the other one is alliteration. So once again, I would explain to you this stanza. Annie's colored hair around her ears. Now what does Annie's colored hair around her ears compared to? What is the comparison given? The comparison is given to a fort, a protection, a covering. Now why does the poet say that? The poet says that because her beautiful yellow hair is covering the ears of Annie Gregory. And that is why he says that he is comparing her hair to that of a rampart, to that of a fort. He tells her that if anybody is loving you, he should love you only for yourself. It means that for who you are, he should not fall in love with you for your golden hair, for your yellow hair. Because if he falls in love with you for your yellow hair, he may go into hopelessness. He may go into despair 
if you reject him so he does not want that to happen so that is what the first stanza stands for so now the second stanza but i can get a hair dye and set such color there brown or black or carrot that young men in despair may allow me for myself alone and not my yellow hair now this is a reply by annie gregory they can give you this answer and they can ask you who is the speaker of these lines now who is the speaker of these lines the speaker of these lines is annie gregory who is the speaker speaking to the speaker is speaking to the poet why does the speaker say these words the speaker says these words because the poet told her that young men would fall in love with her only because of her golden hair that acts like a rampart because it is covering her ears and that is why she is giving this reply now what is the reply that she gives she says that if you think if you feel that the young men are falling in love with me because of my golden hair then i can do something now what can she do she can change the color of her hair she can dye it you know what is a dye d y e okay it is a coloring used to change something we dye our hair so what she tells the poet is that if you feel that young men are falling in love with me because of my golden hair and you do not want them to be in despair or you do not want them to be in hopelessness then i can color my hair but i can get a hair dye it means that i can color my hair now who is i in this stanza i stands for annie gregory so please put a circle there and write annie gregory so he says but i can get a hair dye and set such color there she says she can change her hair to different colors supposing they ask you what are the colors mentioned or what colors will ani change her hair to she says i can change my hair to brown or black or carrot carrot is orange red color so that is what she says so ani says that if somebody is falling in love with me and the, you do not want them to go in despair but i have i can do one thing very easily i can just change the color of my hair i can change it into three colors three different colors i can change it into brown or black or carrot so that that's the meaning of saying that young men in despair that so that the young hopeless men who are in despair the men who are hopeless the men who are in despair would not love me for my hair but would love me for myself that is what she says in this stanza so she says that young men in despair may love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair so annie replies to the poet saying that if the poet feels that the young men are falling in love with her and later on would go into hopelessness or display despair just because they love her of love her because of her golden hair she can do something she can change the color of her hair into different colors like black brown or carrot so that men would not fall in love with her and would not become despair would not become terrible or would not be hopeless that they would love her not for her hair but for her self now then the last stanza is the last stanza i heard an old religious man but yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only god my dear could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair now this is a very important stanza of this poem 
and a very important message given to us in this stanza. The important message given to this stanza. Now the poet replies back. Now who is the speaker of these lines? The poet. Who is the poet speaking to? Annie Gregory. Who does I stand for? I stands for the poet. So in this stanza, what does the poet say? The poet says, I heard an old religious man, but yesternight declare. He says, yesterday night, the previous night, he had heard a religious man, means a man of spirituality, a man who is very close to God. He heard that man last night or the previous night declare. Declare means announce, say. So the poet says that the last night, the previous night, he had heard a very religious man, a saint, announcing. Now what did this saint announce? He announced that he had found, that he had found a text to prove. Now what do you mean by text? It could be a verse from the scriptures, from the holy books. The holy books are written in verses. So he would have, the religious man, the previous night, he has announced that he had found a text in a holy book. And what does the text say? That only God, my dear, could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So in these lines, it is very clear, the message passed to all of us, that there is nobody in the world that would love you with their heart, that would love you for who you are. There is only one person in the whole world that would love you for who you are and that person is only God. So that is what he says when the poet tells her, when the poet tells her that, okay, when she says that, if you think that men would go in despair or men would become hopeless because they fall in love with me only for my hair, I can change my color of my hair to black, brown or carrot so that men would not fall in love with me for my golden hair, but they fall in love with me for who I am. At that particular time, the poet replies that the previous night he had heard a saint or a religious man declare or say that there is only one person in the whole world that would love you for who you are and that particular person is only God. So that is what the speaker means, that humans do not have the capacity and understanding to look inside the soul of a person. See, that is what he means. Humans, we humans, we, we are not able to understand or we do not go deep into the person or look into the soul of a person. Humans are always attracted. Now all of us, all humans, they are always attracted towards beauty. They never care to know the person behind the beautiful appearance. Means they do not look, they do not want to know about the person behind the beauty, behind the beautiful appearance. They simply, flatly fall for the person or fall for anything that is beautiful. And then that important message that the poet tells is that there is only one person in the world and that one person is only God who can love you for yourself, for what you are. So that is the complete poem, Annie Gregory. It's a very easy poem and a very important poem because you can expect one question from this lesson because this lesson was introduced again this year. For the past two, two years or three years, this lesson was deleted. It was not there for the 10th standard. They have introduced this lesson and that is why this lesson is very important. So I will just once again briefly explain to you the summary of this lesson. The summary of this poem is that what the poet is talking to Annie Gregory. And who is Annie Gregory? Annie Gregory is the granddaughter of Augusta, Lady Augusta Gregory, who was a very close friend of of the poet. Now why is this apostrophe? Because 
this Annie Gregory, we do not know her, we have not seen her, we do not, she is not present at the moment. And that is why the complete poem, you know, the figure of speech used is apostrophe. And in the first stanza, the poet says that he does not want any man to fall in despair or disappointment because he fell in love with Annie Gregory and has been rejected. And he says to Annie Gregory that any man would fall for you only because of your beauty, only because of your golden hair, which acts like a fort, which acts like a rampart. Rampart means fort. It, it is comparing it to a fort because her hair is covering the ears of Annie Gregory. And he says, nobody can, he wants somebody who would love her for herself and not for her golden hair. And immediately Annie Gregory replies and says, if the poet feels that the men would be disappointed when they fall in love with me for my golden hair, I can change my color of my hair to black, to brown or to carrot so that nobody would fall in love with Annie Gregory just because of her hair but they would fall in love with her only for who she is. And then in the last stanza, the poet says that yesterday night, last night, the previous night, he had heard a religious man declare, means announce, or say. Now what did the religious man say? The religious man said that he had read a text from the scriptures, from the holy books. And what did the text say? The text said that there is only one person in the whole world who would love you for who you are. And that one person is only God. And that is the message of this lesson. So I hope every one of you enjoyed this lesson. Every one of you understood this lesson. Please do comment and please do subscribe and, and share to your friends. I will come back to you with another poem the next time. Thank you for watching.